Welcome back guys to The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. I'm Zelda Master and in this episode we're gonna be doing some pretty cool side quests. So the quickest way to the ocean is through the west gate. I'm gonna ignore that right now and uh, well let's start off by slowing down time. You know I gotta do this before I start off my three day cycle because yeah if time is going by too fast I won't be able to do what I want to do especially if they are certain side quests that revolve around doing things at specific times and all of that because you know this game goes by time and uh, certain things happen at certain times so yeah um but as you can see I am heading to the chest that holds the silver rupee so I can pick up a hundred rupees real quickly I believe we can also get ourselves another hundred rupees in the bombers hideout while heading to the observatory but I'm gonna ignore that for now uh, it's an easy hundred rupees we can actually pick it up now if I wanted to but I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna pick up this because I only need like I believe 50 rupees for this side quest that will open up some pretty awesome stuff I'm really excited to show off the set of things we're gonna be doing this episode it's really fun Man, I just love taking it on. You're going to see what I'm talking about. So, let's go ahead and now head to, I believe, West Clock Town. So, it's just right up here. We're not going to be exiting from the West Gate. Actually, we can, but we're not going to be heading to the Ocean Realm yet. Um, but what I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and purchase a new item that we couldn't buy until now. If you remember the last episode, we got the uh, certificate to buy kegs because you need to actually handle a keg and once the big Goron said okay you're good to go we can actually buy him from the Goron here in the bomb shop so now we can buy a powder keg for 50 rupees with this powder keg we can explode ginormous rocks and this is gonna come in handy real quickly actually like we're gonna be using it right now so unlike the one we got from the Goron uh, it's not gonna explode we well, it will as long as we set it out and you know Put it down on the floor but for now we are good as long as it's in our inventory it will not go off so let's go ahead and play the song of soaring and make our way to well you guessed it i'm just assuming you guessed it <laughs> we're gonna be making our way to romani ranch because over in romani ranch there are a couple things we can do and remember how we had to wait till the final day for the path to open up well, yeah, that's why we bought the powder keg, so we can actually open it up now and check out what's going on within the very first day. So, yeah, I'm excited to show this off. Let's go ahead and make our way here and uh, see him chipping out the ginormous boulder. So someone, yeah, okay, no good mischief. Put the boulder. He's going to try to dispose of it quickly. But, buddy, no. I'm going to show you how to dispose of it. So he's standing. He knows I'm going to take out something. Ha! <laughs> yeah, now he just goes running as fast as he can when he sees the powder keg. But look at him. He seems happy. So what? I thought I could break it. Really? thought you'd be a little excited that your job is a whole lot easier. You were going to spend the next two days here and try to break this down. But, well, hey, as long as it's open, traffic is fine. Yeah, okay. I agree, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and enter the Romani Ranch on the very first day. So, oh my god, it looks exactly the same. There's really nothing different here, except remember the Romani Ranch girl? Uh, well, she seems to be all happy this time instead of really sad and she seemed kind of like brain dead when we talked to her on the third day, so maybe we can prevent whatever happened to make her feel that way since we are here earlier and she still has her uh, mind, I guess. But isn't that your horse? Is Does Tattle really forget that we've seen Opponent like 50 times every time we come back here? I don't know, but we're gonna see Opponent a whole lot more in just a second. For some reason, it won't let me like look at Opponent first person. I don't know why it was doing that, but let's go ahead and take off our Goron mask and talk to her. So hello there. Hey, how are you? I'm Romani, or who are you? I don't, whatever, who cares? I'm doing good, so yeah. I'm Romani, I was given the same name as the ranch. What's your name? Now we can either not say our name or we can, uh, I'll say Link, because that is my name. So, Link, that's a nice name, but how about Grasshopper? That's the name Romani gives you. See, you're wearing green clothes and you patter about when you walk. So Grasshopper it is. Romani was practicing for tonight. Tonight, they are coming. What? What are they, miss? They, they are coming at night, 
every year when the carnival approaches. Uh... Oh my god, it's... it's... Something with, with shiny eyes, yeah. They come riding in a bright shining ball. A whole lot of them come down. Cows! And then they come to the barn. This is supposed to be like a spooky story because it's not really that spooky. It's, it's actually pretty terrifying. Please stop. Please. Okay, we're good, we're back. So, my older sister won't believe me, but Romani must protect the cows. Why do you talk to yourself in third person or about yourself? That's weird. Hey, Grasshopper, I'm recruiting you for an assistant right now. You're a boy. Won't you try? Sure, I guess. Why not? It sounds like fun. Great, now that's a spirit, Grasshopper. Okay, then. I'm going straight into my strategy. They'll appear all over the ranch. They'll aim for the barn and approach it slowly, so hit them with arrows so they can't get in. You got that? You mustn't leave the ranch. Grasshopper, let's, pr let's practice right away. There are ten ghost sheep balloons in the ranch, so hurry and burst all of them. If you can take over two minutes, if you take over two minutes, you're over. The current record is one minute. Are you ready? Sure. And look, we are given a pony to ride. Yes, our steed is back. We have uh, reunited once again, and we're here to destroy all of these balloons as fast and uh, as quickly as we possibly can. That's pretty much the same word. I don't know why I said as fast and quickly, but whatever. The ranch is closed, so we don't escape with a pony. Uh, and we just gotta focus on destroying all of these balloons with our arrows. It's not that hard. It's a little mini game you can do. Uh, we're gonna try to actually beat the record, which is one minute. That's not gonna be that hard, actually. As I say that, though, we only have half the time left, so I'm gonna try to pick things up. Uh, come on! No! Okay, I'm playing really dumb. I'm just freaking spamming the arrow here. All right, let's try to find the remaining two. There's one here. And then one over there. Can I shoot it? Oh, okay. One more. Where is it? Can I beat the record? Oh, there it is. Here I go. Oh, one second left. Did I do it? I don't know if I did it under a minute. So, okay, you're done. Regardless, we want to do it under two minutes. It doesn't really matter what we get. So, wow, that was so freaking close. Amazing. It's a new record. You two work perfectly together. All right. So we got the goal under one minute, and now I'll teach you Romani's uh, horse culling song to you, Grasshopper. Now you two keep getting along and go practice some more. So if you couldn't tell, yeah, the song she's teaching us is the exact same song, and she has the exact same voice, and she resembles freaking Malone from Ocarina of Time. So yeah, and we're also learning a Pona song from her. So, you, obviously, she's not the same character. Her name is Romani, but, you know, she's pretty much based off of that character. Like, every other character is based off of another character from Ocarina of Time. So, yeah. Or at least most of the characters within this game. And she happens to be Malone. And there we go. We learned Epona's song. With this, we can literally call Epona anywhere at any time, and she will be there to help us out. So, that is super convenient for us. I wasn't paying attention to what she said, but I'm just going to say yes, I got all that. The operation starts tonight at 2. I'll be waiting in the barn. Don't be late. Alright, so we got a date at 2. Just freaking kill off weird things that are going to take care of the barn and stuff. So let's keep that in mind, I guess, and uh, get things started. Now, there is one more thing I want to do before we rush till uh, 2 a.m., to do this little date we have with Romani, and that's, uh, well, you can see her sister here with the cow. I don't know if she's milking the cow, or just, it looks like she's petting the cow. But you can find her here, and you can pick up a bunch of arrows right by the set of, uh, freaking bushes that were surrounding here. Um, I don't think she will talk to you. She's gonna ignore you, I guess because we're a little kid and she didn't care about us or something. Can we speak to her? No, we cannot. Okay, well, guys, let's go ahead and take out Rockarina. And, uh, speed up time a little bit, because, yeah, we gotta wait until freaking 2 in the morning to play this little game with Romani. And her sister doesn't really care about what we do, I mean, she doesn't believe her to begin with, so it doesn't matter, I don't really care what she has to say, but... 
yeah, it's really cool that we do have Epona with us, and literally, when we play Epona song at anywhere within the map, at least in areas that you can ride Epona in, she will appear. So that is super convenient for us. I love how Epona is rideable within, uh, within this game, even at a young age, because in Ocarina of Time, you couldn't ride Epona until, you know, you grew up and Epona grew up as well, and, you know, you took her from Long Line Ranch and all of that. Uh, obviously, if you played the game, you know what I'm talking about, but uh, in this game, it's a little different. Regardless, I am changing the flow of time back to normal because I want to wait until... Uh, 2 a.m. and yeah, I'm just gonna have time to go at a normal pace so it goes a little faster than what I would normally have it. That way it can hit 2 really quickly. But once it does hit 2, I will slow back the flow of time and make it go really slow. So we're just gonna go ahead and chill out right here. And I'll see you guys when it's uh, 2 in the morning in Romani Ranch. So yeah. <sighs> wow, I was actually getting really tired. Okay, it took a bit, but there we go. She is here. I actually want to... No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go in. Okay. No, okay. Well, she entered. At 2.15, ex no, 2.30, I believe, is when it's going to appear. You can stop her while she's marching to the door and uh, talk to her, and she'll give you a little tip. But I didn't really get to do that because, as you saw, she went by way too fast. And that's because I have time going at the normal flow. I'm going to slow down time right now, though, because it's really important for this little thing that's going to happen literally within less than two seconds as we, uh, just wait. Okay, there we go. And it is here. All right, so at 2.30... Aliens are going to appear pretty much now. Yeah, they pretty much are like aliens. They come from space It looks like and they're here to abduct cows because I guess oh in up in space They don't have milk and they really want some because you know Romani milk is like the best around even throughout the whole universe so yeah, but so there are ways to do this. I'm assuming the game intended you to have a Pona and to just literally like ride around trying to kill off all of the alien guys. But the easiest way to do this is just to run around back and forth around the house and just shoot them with your arrows. They, I believe they only get hurt from the arrows as well and they drop bundles so that is really good. We can pick up a bunch of arrows every time we kill one but they're usually far away from when you hit them. At least I'm going to try to hit them when they're pretty far. I don't want them to get any close to the house because if they do, if they do, you fail. And you don't want to fail this, of course. You want to get this done with. Now, we have to do this literally until sunrise, which is around like 5 in the morning. And when you have time going slow, it does take a while. But the reason why we're having time go super slow is because they will pick up in pace if you have time going at the normal flow, which will make this super difficult. So right now they're moving like snails, which makes it a whole lot easier, of course. And uh, yeah, you just have to deal with this longer, but it's a lot safer uh, to go with instead of like actually having time go at the normal flow. Because uh, they're going to be moving way too fast and you might end up having one slip by and making it to the barn, which will result in you losing this whole thing. So... Yeah, just want to make sure you run around and shoot him. The dog over here is going to start barking whenever one comes nearby, which is cool. It kind of like alerts you. Uh, that's why you just kind of want to stay right by the dog and pay attention to him. Or you can just look around. I mean, they literally respawn in the exact same location. It's not like there are more than 10. She literally tells you that there are 10. And you also want to look at your map. If you don't have the Romani Ranch map, this might be a little difficult. I believe she actually tells you to, you know, make sure you actually have the map on you. Or this is going to be uh, a lot harder because you won't know if they're you know, coming closer to the area or not, because you won't be able to see them. So, yeah, you can easily buy that from Tingle, wait outside of uh, Milk Road, if you just exit this place. But, seems that I've been focusing on the same two for quite a bit, so that why that's why these guys were able to catch up. Uh, but, we're good. We'll just keep shooting these guys down uh, until we uh, sunrise, I guess. <laughs> we just have to wait for the sun, the sun to come up. It's... So far, almost four, which is not bad. We're doing pretty good progress. I mean, regardless, it's just this whole back and forth, endless uh, 
scenario of just shooting these guys down with your arrows and if you have the quiver upgrades man is this a whole lot easier because you don't have to worry about running towards one and picking up a bunch of arrows from them as you kill one because yeah you can just hold up to a bunch of arrows so go ahead and actually do it with this one so you drop some real quickly Oh, okay, he did, and he instantly respawned. It's gonna kill him again. Yeah, they respawn, and they take a quarter of a heart if they do happen to hit you. You can actually climb on top of the house to get a better angle to shoot them. There's, I believe there are ladders right back here, but I honestly don't advise that because I'd rather run up close to them, and I feel like your aiming is a whole lot better like that. At least that's my opinion, but... Uh, if you feel like you can snipe him from far away, then, you know, be my guest and try to do that. But, to me, just, this just seems like the safest route. Just stand around the house and make sure nobody comes close until, uh, the sun comes up. Because they will, they can't stand sunlight, so, yeah. This is really creepy, though, how this happens once a year around the carnival time. And she knows it, yet her sister doesn't believe it because she's too stubborn. Because, you know... Freaking Romani's just a little girl, but she knows exactly what's going on. And uh, yeah, I don't know, it's just a really creepy concept. And knowing that this is what made her all messed up by the final day, if you don't make it here in time, like knowing that you can screw this up is really uh, interesting. And I don't know, I like it a lot. I just love the freaking game and how this whole game works around time. And all of the stories are like really dark and just random, something you wouldn't normally expect. Uh, like freaking aliens coming to abduct cows like what the frick man <laughs> so yeah let's just go ahead and focus on uh, keeping this up because we're doing pretty well I guess this dog is actually kind of getting annoying we don't really need his help they're barely moving wow I just realized this is what happens when you have time go really slow so make sure you play the inverted song of time if you want a really easy job with this but like I said it's Gonna take a little longer than uh, it normally would, which will be a whole lot easier, and I prefer that. You know, slow and steady wins the race, rather than fast and sloppy, I guess. But uh, the only reason I'm doing this is because I think it's the best way to go for it, and uh, uh, I kind of advise all of you guys, whoever is gonna try to do this little side quest, to do it like this, because it just makes it a whole lot easier, but... Yeah, we are almost at 5. I'm not entirely sure if it's... I believe it's like 5.30 is when uh, they shall leave. That's when the sun will be pretty much almost completely out. And they will have to leave their stations. Uh, I'm not sure if it's 5.15 or 5.30. But we're going to figure out real soon. So, yeah. Let's just shoot down these guys. Wow, the closer they get, the creepier it feels. Uh... But we are almost there. Okay, he's starting to freak out. I believe one is really close here. Is there? Nah, he's not. He's pretty far away. I guess the duck literally only barks for like three of them. The three that surround the house. But the rest he doesn't give a crap about because they're usually so far away. I mean, we barely hit the ones that are really far back. And I didn't mean to take that off. But yeah, having your bunny hood on makes this pretty easy as well. Uh, instead of having a pony because you go... I guess a quarter of the speed of Epona, which is still pretty fast. It's a whole lot faster than running normally. But there we go. Yes, at 5.15, this all ends. The weird solar thing picks him up, and you hear that nice fanfare. And there we go. So we did it. We won. Thank you. Thanks to you, the cows are giving thanks too. Here's Romani's thanks. When you drink it, put your hand on your hip and take a big gulp like we do here at Romani Ranch. It's a weird thing to do, but there we go. We got ourselves a bottle that has milk in it. And yeah, so it's almost time for my sister to get up, so I have to go back to bed. See you later. All right, bye. And we helped the ranch girl. Just like that, we were able to pick up a bottle and, uh, have some milk in. I'm gonna go ahead and take a nice sip, because why the heck not? I mean, it's not like I'm gonna do anything else with it. If you do rewind time, you end up losing it, so, yeah. There we go, half is gone. I really like how, you know, you can store milk, you know, for two drinks, which is pretty nice. But, yeah, okay, so, now what I wanna do is, uh, just play the song of, uh passing forward time to the next day and literally the song of double time rather is we're only gonna be forwarding like what 45 minutes or so but it's worth it because there's something that happens at exactly 
six in the morning on the second day that we're gonna have to do this time it's romani's sister so let's go ahead and find her she should be uh where is she if if i can actually wait wait what am i saying it's on the night not on the day so her sister is up all about doing whatever she wants to do but on night of the second day we'll be able to to do something so let's go ahead and forward time real quickly and uh see what exactly you can do so this is obviously another small quest that you can only do before the final day and uh yeah you have to have the keg to blow it up and stuff but let's go ahead and talk to her as you can tell she has a carriage with her and i don't think that's a horse that's most likely yeah like a donkey i can't tell <laughs> but pona looks so much better let's just go ahead and talk to her so how is it going if the game will allow me to speak there we go so oh good evening i'm going to town to deliver milk would you like a ride sure i guess why not that sounds fun so here we go so that's great tonight i'm kind of lonely i welcome company and we're off my friends opponent move out of the way okay go straight through opponent did opponent just opponent is getting pushed with us what that is so freaking weird. Okay, so I guess it's been a while now since our father died. I'm trying to take care of the ranch, but things have been getting whatever. The cows always seem bothered and frazzled. Maybe because you don't listen to your sister and aliens are trying to abduct them for their milk. Jeez. So my sister, Romani, has been worried. She's been practicing using a bow. Yeah, we know all of this. Say, what kind of... What are towns for saying about the moon? It's getting bigger. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, she's a ranch girl, so I guess she's not paying attention, but yeah. In town, I, I have a friend, her name's Angie, Andrew, rather, so, Andrew's uh, wedding is a day after tomorrow. Interesting. Too bad she'll never have that happen, because the moon crashes tomorrow, not the day after, so, I feel bad for your friend Andrew, but she ain't never gonna get a freaking wedding, I'll tell you that much. Anyways, uh, wait a second. This was not here before. There's something blocking the path. What? The road. Boy, get your bow ready. She senses evil. Yeah, most likely some hooligan put this so they can trick us. So, um, this doesn't look good at all. What are we going to do? Well, we're taking a different path. A path I never actually showed off. Uh, I guess this isn't really a part of Milk Road. We're going to be heading through somewhere else. We're... You see that sign that's freaking spammed all over the screen? Yeah, this is the ugly country, as she says. We're going to have to take a detour through it. And, uh, are you ready, boy? I'm going to try to get through here as fast as I can. If any pursuers come from behind, chase them off with your arrows. They may be after my cargo of milk bottles. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Thanks, I'm relying on you. If we can get through here, I'll give you a... I'll have a big thanks for you. Okay, thanks. And as she says that, freaking these guys are trying to attack us. Now, you want to be careful because with their pitchforks and stuff, they're going to try to break the uh, jars of milk. And you don't want that to happen because if they all break, you pretty much lose this. I don't think that has ever happened to me, though. I never actually lost this because you literally just spam arrows to slow them down. And even if they start picking up, just keep spamming the arrows. Also, something funny, these guys, they may have thieves masks, but you can kind of tell what character they are based off of because their nose is really popping out. Uh, yeah, you see that billboard in the back? Uh, it's pretty similar, am I right? Um, but they are also riding donkeys, I'm assuming. You can tell by the uh, messed up teeth and the, the, obviously that just looks like a donkey regardless, I unless it's a really dumb horse. but. Whoa, bro, slow down. We need to keep hitting this one. I don't even think you can target on them. Tattle will, uh, you know, surround them, but it's not really going to do much. Just keep hitting them. And I'm not sure if they broke anything yet, but you can hear the sound effects as they do hit uh, one of the, the cradles of milk. But we have made it out, and the game is kind of lagging, uh, as you can see. But there we go. We did it. Yay. We're free at last. They just gave up. They don't want to chase us anymore because, I mean, they got hit with a lot of arrows. I don't know how that didn't affect them, but yeah. Mr. Barton was so happy to get his first delivery in quite a while. Thank you. You were pretty cool. 
This isn't very big, but accept my thanks. And we got the Romani's mask. Wear it, and we can be a member of the bar and get a cool milk latte. So, by doing one good deed, a child becomes an adult. That mask is only given to a limited number of adult customers. It's proof of membership. I now acknowledge you as being an adult. Thank you. And uh, that does that. So we helped Creamia with this little quest. And uh, we got ourselves a really cool mask, which is the Romani mask. This will allow us to freaking get milk at a milk bar. Yeah, that's awesome, right? I don't know. It looks really dumb, but... Yeah, um, anyways, uh, that does it for this episode. I'm going to go ahead and rewind at time. Maybe I should deposit the rupees I have. Who really cares, though? But, um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In the next episode, we're actually going to be heading through this pathway. Even though this is not the next area we want to go to, we're going to be heading through here and uh, checking out what lies there. So, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one. Good? Bye!